As part of this talk, what I was thinking is I'll start with some background about Lending Tree uh, and then walk you guys through the product, uh, both on the marketplace side and the engagement stack we have, and then give a high level overview of how in a marketplace environment, the role that algorithms have, uh, how do we think about it, and then towards the end, uh, leave enough time for Q&A. So uh, for the audience who is not familiar with Lending Tree, they have been in the business for a long time. Uh, the journey started off with Doug, our founder CEO, trying to find uh, offers for home loan back in 1996. This was the time when you literally had to fax, uh, basically call up banks and the banks would fax back the offers. Uh, we've come a long way from there. Initial journey was predominantly on mortgage. At one point, we were even in the business of originating loans. Uh, whereas now we are one of the most comprehensive marketplace uh, for loans. And in future, we want to build the relationship for customers so that if someone has any need for a financial product, they come to us and then we are able to give them the best options uh, and a great user experience. So in terms of financials, if you look early on the, the green uh, section that you see up here, that's the mor mortgage revenue. It used to drive a big slice of our uh, overall revenue. Whereas if you were to take a snapshot of last year, like mortgage has been a relatively smaller slice, whereas other verticals like personal loan, credit card, insurance, and what we call others is basically small business and uh, other categories have now become a much, much uh, bigger slice. We are very, very well uh, diversified uh, in terms of the product mix. If for the folks who are familiar with like CB Insights, how they have the whole FinTech universe, if you try to plot us on there, we are in lending, insurance, uh, mortgage, and uh, now have started entering into personal finance and wealth management. L let's uh, dig deeper into on the product side. So on the left side, this is our traditional it's market. Yeah, just a just a small thing. Uh, we are we are just only able to see slide three. Uh, it's not oh. moved on for us. Okay. Um, let me let me try to reshare it again then. Mm -hmm. Are you able to see? Slide seven now. We can see that you started screen sharing, but we can't see anything right now. Like it's just a blank screen. I've turned off the video. Is this better? Um, not really. Is it spinning or like nothing happening on your end? Nothing, it's just a dark screen. Hey Riz, can you please help? Can you please, uh, uh, you know, make yourself uh, the presenter and then uh, give Sushil the rights again? Yeah, let me see if that'll work real quick. Folks, thank you so much for your patience as we work through this technical glitch. Technology is not perfect. Any luck this time? Uh, Unfortunately not. Try one more time, Sushu. Okay. Uh, 
and this is after the whole day we are all we do is zoom <laughs> yeah unfortunately it's still not sharing uh, what we can do sushil if you'd like to continue with the um with your content i'm happy to um post the deck that you've been using onto the blog that we reshare after the event so that way people have oh there we go yeah it just popped on okay go ahead okay thank you so in terms of the product offering uh so what we call the traditional marketplace business, this is where the customer actually knows what they want. Uh, so someone is looking for a home or a personal loan, they would come to the platform, fill out basic information about them. And the biggest value add the platform does is we match them with the best option, best loan options and the lenders. On, I mean, uh, one fundamental challenge with the marketplace model is you have to acquire the user for every transaction. There's no thing about the concept uh, in e-commerce that if everyone was just doing a guest checkout without no profile, there's very less personalization or basically stickiness on the platform that you can drive. So in the last few years, we have started building uh, the engagement platform. This is basically the logged in experience uh, where the customer comes on the platform. We are, uh, in addition to the basic questions, we uh, ask the uh, user to share their credit file. And based on the credit file, then we are able to recommend uh, products to drive savings, help them improve the credit score, and then do more uh, intelligent recommendations to even boost the credit score. Uh, I just wanted to give you guys the context that there are two very separate product offerings so that when we go uh, through the next set of slides, it'll help you anchor which side of the house uh, am I talking about. So marketplace, let's start with the marketplace uh, product. It's basically like any other marketplace where we are aggregating demand and then based on the demand, we try to get uh, solved the supply side, which is basically the lenders and providers, uh, bring them on the platform and the basic, uh, function of a marketplace is to match uh, demand with supply. In terms of on the demand side, uh, the focus is always on getting uh, high quality users who are looking for the best offers, best rate or the user experience, something where they know what they're looking for. And then on the lender side, we try to maintain that whatever they are spending on the marketplace is ROI positive, they get the right quality and the volume of leads. Uh, in terms of the KRs, I mean, on the demand side, it's cost per lead, which is your uh, acquisition cost. And then on the marketplace, we try to uh, maintain NPS along with uh, the revenue per lead. So it's user happiness and the monetization on the users. On the supply side, one of the key factors is how many offers we have and for how many users we are able to uh, find uh, really good offers that they would uh, transact on. So how does the marketplace look? So think about this is just a very simplistic uh, workflow. Uh, user is looking for top personal loans, say on one of the search engines, they click our ad, then we take them through a form flow where we ask basic information. Again, remember here, we are not the lender, so we are not asking every uh, bit of information to basically underwrite the loan, but we want to get enough sense about the user to figure out which lender do we match them with. Uh, so once we have the basic set, then we start uh, pinging the lender systems in the back end. Uh, based on the offers that we get, we aggregate them and post them back to the user. Uh, and this is where we basically use our own uh, proprietary algorithms to figure out which would be the best offer, what is the rate based on what the user uh, is looking for. Now, on the marketplace, Uh, so on the engagement stack, how does the user experience look? So uh, we started off, think about this thing as your logged in portal uh, where 
the whole goal is not just to solve for what the immediate user need is. I think that's fairly easy that marketplace uh, side solves for it. Uh, here, the whole focus is based on your credit file, how much value can we drive in the first uh, session to the user? So if you were to pass your credit file, it gives you enough information on your outstanding loan uh, amount. And then we try to figure out if you were to refinance your uh, line of credit, how much could you save? So your first and the second, that is where we started building the platform on. Uh, currently, we are in the cycle of spend, budget, and save. And I'll walk you guys in the next few slides on the thinking behind it, why we started uh, diversifying uh, to other verticals. And as part of this whole solution, we also have uh, powered by lending tree, which is basically a SaaS offering that if we have a partner who wants to drive savings for their customers, but does not have the technical know-how, they can just either use our APIs or white label the solution. And this, the service is always uh, free to the users. So in terms of like when I joined, the big focus was on the credit score. Uh, so a lot had changed uh, in those years where now credit score had almost started becoming commodity. So the key things we went out to solve in the user experience and the product offering was uh, credit score has become commodity. So how do like, what should be that next engagement stack uh, onto the product? And what are the features that would drive more regular engagement? Uh, because credit score does not change that much on a weekly or a monthly basis, unless and unless there is a big, uh, say, balance on your card and you pay it off. In that case, it could uh, show some movement. But for most of the users, it takes a while uh, to get a meaningful lift or a change on the credit score. And the third thing was, how do we create that value exchange? Because the first session the user gives us is trusting us with so much, right? They're sharing their credit file. So what insight we can give to the user that would be uh, beneficial uh, for them in the first and actionable in the first session itself. Uh, so some of the data points, I'm sharing more of the publicly available ones that went into the thinking is if you look at the whole of US, more than 70% of the, the people identify themselves as not in a great uh, financial state. So then some of the features that they would like to engage on is uh, if financial products can drive savings, if we can optimize the cash flow, because cash flow is something, it's basically cash coming in and out that we can optimize per pay uh, cycle. So it will have much uh, shorter reward time for the user. The other part was the, the product back in the day was just focus on liabilities. So if you look at a customer's balance sheet, the asset side is eight times larger than the liabilities. So we had to enter on the asset side. Plus uh, from a product perspective, the features you can build on the asset side are much more engaging and rewarding. I mean, imagine just every day showing someone that you have a loan and you have to pay off say X thousand dollars versus the delight you can drive on the assets that you have assets of X thousand dollars and based on your investments, they've grown by say 2% or 20% within that time frame. So all these inputs uh, in addition to basically the plumbing for the product is around, so we started off with mortgage. So think about the touch point a user would have if we were just a mortgage platform. Uh, I mean, people engage with a mortgage loan or buy a new house every 10 to 12 years. So that's very, very long time to even build a logged in experience. As we started diversifying from like product, personal loan and cards, we started shrinking uh, the touch points from around 10 years to like less than a year uh, with cards. And most of this data set and the insights we can drive from the user's credit file. So to drive the next step function in engagement, we had to solve for, okay, how do we get uh, 
and where can we add value on the cash flow, which is your bank and the credit card transactions. Uh, and the goal was to drive uh, meaningful engagement at uh, weekly and bi-weekly uh, touch points. In terms of product journeys, so think about, you can think about this as product journeys or user personas. There could be users in multiple uh, verticals at the same time, but high level, it's basically someone is trying to optimize either spend, trying to save, if there is a gap between these, which is say if someone is spending more than what they're able to save, then you have to solve for, okay, what is the best way uh, and the best options uh, given what the user needs are uh, for them to borrow. And then your planning is on the asset side. This is more of a uh, long-term plan. So how, how does all of this uh, come together? So if you look at the new user experience that we have designed, I mean, the think about three main vectors. The your past is reflected uh, in credit score and every user study, uh, even through third party looks like this. The credit score has become almost table stakes uh, on any uh, financial health uh, offering. So we had to keep it. Uh, and the cash flow one, this is trying to solve your present and the engagement uh, cycle would be much lower. So this is at a weekly engagement cycle. And on the future side, we introduced the vector on assets. And if you remember one of the goals that the team had was how do we drive basically delight in the first time user experience that is driven by what we call like savings and recommendations module. So this is based on what existing loans the user has. Uh, we try to find proactively the best loans from our marketplace and then would uh, recommend savings. Now, having used so many numbers, uh, we thought it would be very tricky to introduce one more number around financial health. So the overarching metric here is very much, it's basically on a scale uh, you need to take certain actions versus you're doing uh, really good. Uh, let's jump into the matching algorithms. Uh, so very high level, what the information we get from the user are the basic uh, information, your name, address, the product uh, type that they're looking for. And on certain products, we also get uh, third party data through credit bureaus or third party validation uh, platforms. In terms of what the lender is looking for, that would be which, which are loan types uh, would, are they looking for on our platform? What is the budget? What is their ideal filter or the box uh, in which they like to underwrite loans? This would be around credit band or your debt to income ratio and what the platform tries to do through matching algorithms is based on what the user is and how the targeting the lender is doing, we try to uh, solve for the lender matching. There's some uh, products where if we get like pre-approved uh, things from the lender, then we would start posting uh, recommendations. And in terms of like the challenges, the key challenges that the matching algorithm tries to solve for one is around managing expectations. So almost every user uh, expects that if they're looking for a financial product, uh, they should be approved for it. It's very different than, I used to work in the airline industry where everyone, irrespective of uh, credit band, if you're looking for a flight, uh, you would. And if there's a seat on the flight, you would, uh, uh, every platform would show that. Whereas financial products are very different. Uh, based on your credit file uh, or your current situation, uh, there could be lenders who may not even extend that offer. So it is solve for, okay, is the user even eligible for that? The second aspect of that is what are the loan terms they would get? Uh, it, it's a very, very wide bell curve based on the loan product. like personal loans probably has the widest. Uh, mortgage loans has very narrow bell curve. 
uh, on personal loans, your spread could be between say 5% APR to like 20, 25% or even higher than that. Most users think that they would be on the left side of the spectrum. So for example, if a user is looking for $10,000, they may think they would get a 499 APR, whereas they could end up getting just approved for $5,000 and their APR could be uh, around 20%. Uh, so then it also, one of the challenges on the UX side is how do you present these results back to the user so that they understand why they got those results. So it's working with the algorithm so that we ping maximum number of lenders uh, to get the best offer and even the challenges on presenting it back to the user. In terms of now jumping on the uh, recommendation uh, platform, the way it works is we get the data from credit bureaus, what the user is inputting, uh, and then we have internal rules engines and data science models that the whole goal is to create opportunity where the customer uh, would be able to save on either their existing loan products or say if it's an insurance offer that we can find better insurance than what you're paying for. Uh, the great thing about this is the incentives are very uh, much in line. So if the user will only take action when they're able to save, uh, and if they're able to save, then the platform uh, makes money uh, from the providers. So for example, in this case, say if we find a user who has a very high credit card balance, the platform would try to find a personal loan with a much lower APR. Typically, the personal loan APRs would be much lower than what you may be paying your credit card provider. And then the recommendation would go out as, why don't you do debt consolidation? Here's the loan for you. And what we try to do is try to make it more actionable versus just giving the education that this is what uh, you need to do because there's a lot of sites and platforms that give the education, but in order for the user to uh, basically avail of it, they still have to go through the hard work. So the thinking here is the platform will do all the hard work, compute everything for you, and then the user just has to click on it and take advantage of it. In terms of the overall health, like if we call ourselves like a financial wellness platform, one of the KPIs that we measure is for what percentage of users were we able to improve the credit score? Uh, so for more than 50% of the users, we were able to increase the credit score by more than 50 points. Obviously the higher engagement the user gives, which is the more actions they take on recommendations, the credit score increase has been higher than 70 points. This is more of a basic, uh, info about credit score. It's, uh, I think even before I uh, joined the industry, I didn't know the intricacies of credit score. Uh, it is, it's basically, you get it from three credit bureaus, every factor. So there are like five factors which are weighted differently. For example, your new credit would have a weight of 10%, whereas your payment history would have a weight of 35%. Your score goes between 300 to 850. What in terms of for the marketplace, we use on the backend side, lenders use different models. Uh, so there are 56 plus FICO models that basically uh, give out different scores because all they are trying to do is one, your weights on these factors would be different, plus new variables get added based on the model. Uh, what this basically tells is someone underwriting a student loan will be using a different model than say someone underwriting a mortgage loan. Uh, the other aspect here is from a product standpoint, we always love if you give someone a task, you do A, B, and C, and you would see a left. With credit score, it's not that easy and actionable because for example, say someone has a very short uh, history uh, on the credit file, it'll take a while for them uh, to build on this particular metric. 
I think towards the end, this is what I was, I think uh, initially Mahip was alluding to. So product role has a very, very wide spectrum. Uh, I think probably the way product is defined is a function of the department and the company altogether. So if you look at this spectrum on the left side being heavy on technology focus, on the right side, it's very heavy on the business side. The, the shades of product management go from technical product manager to data PM to core or a feature PM. And then on the right side, revenue and growth. Uh, these are some of the keywords that I've just put in to identify what role is being uh, either uh, advertised for. So if you look at a job description, it has the keywords around feature or optimize or build a user experience. That sounds more like the core uh, product management task. And the blue dotted line is more the bell curve on where most of the jobs are. Obviously a bit skewed on the left side uh, with the platform and the technology heavy companies. Uh, but still bulk of them are on the core uh, product management, which is around building features, refining user experience, running A-B testing, optimizing, driving engagement. So those were the main things I had as part of the prepared remarks. Uh, I'll open the floor for Q&A. Before we jump onto it, we do have a lot of openings around this wide spectrum at Lending Tree. Do check them out. And if something excites you, apply it online. Thank you. Over to Mahib. Thank you, Sushil. That was, that was quite, quite uh, insightful. Um, a few things that I picked up on. Uh, number one, that uh, a credit score is not a single number. Uh, it's amazing that there are 56 models behind it. So depending on whether you are applying for a credit card or something else, I think it's a it's a very different store that could be picked up. So you know it's it's not just one number. So that's that's quite insightful. And um, the second thing, of course, is the is the bell curve uh, that you have been able to create. I think you you did apply your product management skills to be able to come up with that slide. Um, so especially for those of you trying to break into product management or if you feel that you know your product management growth has uh, has stagnated, or you would want to expose yourself to new challenges, uh, you know keep this slide in mind. Uh, you know when you look for keywords and new job openings, you will be able to place it on a on a spectrum. So so th thank you, Sushil. I think this is quite insightful. Uh, we will now open it up for questions. Uh, folks, you are welcome to ask right away. If you would uh, like me to present Sushil with the question. Uh, please do type it out in the chat. Otherwise, it's an open floor for uh, questions right now. Hi, uh, Sushil. Uh, thank you so much for presenting. I really enjoyed, especially uh, sort of you talking through how uh, Lending Tree is trying to build more of a daily or weekly habit among users. Uh, you you mentioned some of sort of where you're headed uh, with that. Where where do you think there are opportunities for Lending Tree to improve? Uh, the number of people on a weekly basis who keep coming back because products like Mint, I mean, just from personal experience, I've used but don't use past uh, uh, a couple weeks. Um, and I sort of this PFM space uh, where you have a regular habit of coming uh, and managing your finances is quite difficult to create really engaging user habits. So uh, if, if you sort of feel like you guys are doing better than Mint um, and sort of wh where do you think there's more opportunities so great question. In fact, when we start thinking about the feature, the first thing was we don't want to be mint. Yeah. So we are, we are not doing that transactional level optimization and then helping people categorize their spend. So if you look at the cash flow uh, part, it has planning also built into it. So structurally, if you take a further step back, a lot of users coming to Lending Tree were looking for a personal loan. So there is structural gap between they are spending more than what they're earning. So our focus was how do we create simple interfaces so that they can start planning for it. Like there are some expenses that you have to have, like for example, rent, mm -hmm. uh, right? And we know based on like your past history, how much you have, you have to allocate for things that you can't change. So then how do you 
uh, give inputs to the user the, to optimize the remaining part of it. So we wanted to keep it very high level. Think about, uh, I think there have been other platforms that have used the words of like buckets of spend. So how much are you spending within that uh, bucket? And how can we basically help uh, drive value in it? Uh, the product is, I think we just released MVP of it last quarter. So it's, it, is a, it has a long uh, roadmap ahead, but we want to add value on things like say if someone booked a travel on a credit card that was not giving them travel reward, card, reward cards, right? So we could have recommended, hey, this particular transaction you should have done with this card. So we want to go at like meaningful buckets where we can uh, add value. And have you ever considered multiplayer mode as a way to drive weekly uh, or monthly engagement? Uh, if people go to these Reddit and Facebook groups on a regular basis all the time. Uh, so I'm wondering if you ever explored UGC and community driven online content. So we have talked about it. I don't think we have come up with like a great solution for it. I mean, forget the UGC part of it, what I think the next version that we have been trying to figure out is uh, like cash flow, right? It would be your family spending. So how do we get the significant other as part of the same platform? So they are looking at the same data at a high level, but it still maintains uh, uh, privacy. On the UGC side, we haven't played purely on the UGC side, but we have used a lot of video content like in-house, we have a lab where we, we make our own TV uh, creatives also. So that same lab we are using for educational uh, content. What we found is, and it may be the uh, attempts that we have made, is people say that they like it, but it, it's, it's almost like, say, if I have to lose weight and if I just read a blog, that won't make me lose weight, right? I have to do certain actions. So we have not been able to build those habits. And on the platform, we didn't have enough tools to basically even quantify it. Our only thing was snapshot after three months. Okay, did you improve your credit score? Now it's not a static line, right? You may have improved it, then someone, something bad may have happened at the job. They may have lost the job and then they're accumulating. So it's, our goal is let's figure out like what would define success and then we'll start putting more onto it. Super, thank you so much, Sushil. Thank you. Thanks. Hi, Sushil. Can we spend a little more time on uh, the marketplace slide? And I know there are different kind of approaches to building the marketplace. So maybe you focus on the supply side first and then attract more demand uh, that way or vice versa. Could you share a little bit more about your approach at LendingTree? Yeah, so I think you're referring to this one, right? Uh, uh, we're still seeing the uh, product role spectrum. Okay, there's some lag. Let me stop my video. So on the marketplace part, it is always tricky, right? Do you start with the demand side or do you start with the supply side? Uh, I don't think there's a clear answer that, okay, do uh, only the supply side and we'll solve the demand side later on. Uh, the approach that we have taken as we sc start scaling new verticals is, you still need an anchor tenant on the supply side, someone who has a very broad offering. And you have to know like which users are you trying to solve for? Like for example, personal loans. I mean, it's a very, very wide spectrum. You have to know which user segment you would go after because that would dictate your marketing efforts and the marketing channels. So once you know at a high level that this is the band I want to play in, then you start with getting at least one or two large uh, suppliers and then start generating demand, uh, like basically start acquiring users uh, to solve for it. Uh, obviously, the, I mean, prior to lending tree, I uh, used to lead product at uh, Match for a long time. There, the marketplace and the dynamics are very, very different that you need, uh, it, it has a lot of value network effects, right? Imagine a dating site with only one person there. It's not even viable uh, versus having 1 million users on the platform. Now, one good thing about lending or the financial marketplace is 
it has very less network effect. Uh, for example, say if on a platform where someone would say, okay, if I have 10 million users with users in this particular credit band, that doesn't mean the supplier would take or lower the offers, right? They're still being driven by their underwriting, uh, underlying underwriting model. So just because 10 uh, folks applied for the loan versus one, your outcome may be very similar. And that is why I think building marketplace solutions, especially for a few products uh, on the financial services side, is relatively easier than, say, you building your dating or the next version of LinkedIn or Facebook. Thank you very much. Did, did my slide refresh? It didn't. Oh. <laughs> okay. So other questions, folks, uh, we still have some time for Q&A. Any questions related to marketplaces, building marketplaces? Uh, and marketplaces seem to be in the home. If, if I share my personal experiences from Sales and Transform Co, uh, we build marketplaces of physical products because we wanted to uh, provide assortment to our customers which we couldn't carry. And then we see marketplaces of financial products like Sushil talked about, then there are marketplaces of API. So for product leaders of tomorrow or product managers of today who uh, have an interest in this area, uh, this is your open forum to ask questions. Just and I, uh, yes, please, Rohan, your question. I was about to read it out, but yeah, I was just going to say, I mean, you said Lending Tree doesn't have many uh, network effects. Do you think it has any network effects? So I think anytime you go very binary, uh, binary, it is very easy to refute, right? For example, yes, it has, because otherwise your providers will not start giving offers. So I'd say tomorrow, if you go to say Goldman Sachs and say, I have my friend and he's looking for a personal loan. On the, on the loan? consumer side, on the consumer side, do you think it has any network effects? Uh, okay, it's a great question. On the consumer side, I think what happens is if it is just one product and say one transaction that would you would do in like 20 years, then probably very, very weak network effects, right? But given the breadth of products that we carry for that same consumer, you'll be able to drive bigger value than if you were just underwriting, say, the mortgage loan, right? Mm -hmm. So that would then drive the repeat visit from the uh, user. And basically, your LTV on the customer uh, would be much higher. You could argue if the outcome is right, then there would be more word of mouth. And that helps that uh, cycle to grow. Got it. Got it. Yeah, I mean, because we talk about Credit Karma and Nerd Wallet as two competitors for, for Lending Tree. And uh, Credit Karma, I, you sort of think of it as they spend a lot on paid advertising in such a way that uh, it does seem word of mouth has uh, has been a big part of the Credit Karma growth. Do you, do you feel like uh, similarly word of mouth is a part of the lending tree story or paid acquisition um, like SEM uh, sort of larger contributor? So traditionally, uh, paid marketing has been very strong. Right. Because I think it's also the history of the company, right? Like mortgage, for example, uh, it is, I mean, it's very difficult to predict when someone would be in the market for a home loan. Your credit file does not tell. Remember, credit file captures your snapshot of the past, right? With financial services, you're trying to predict the future. Uh, so the more data signals you have, it will help. But I mean, the biggest signal is someone trying to Google and say, okay, right. how do I buy a home? Right. So uh, in the past, if you can get the unit economics to work, that is a very good outcome. Uh, but eventually I think, I don't think anyone has clearly solved the financial marketplace, like the way say Amazon has solved. For right. That, right. Right. Uh, so I think that is still up for grabs for like someone to own that uh, space. Where, where, I guess a consumer starts their search, not on Google, but on the, on the brand itself. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. Um, like travel, for example, back in the day, there were two or three aggregators. I used to work at Travelocity uh, uh, where I think three or four solved it, but eventually now it's Expedia uh, mm -hmm. is the biggest one. 
so yes, on financial services, there's no one website where you go for education, learning about products, and even availing products, uh, right? The, uh, so I think there will be network effect, not in terms of like helping a platform grow, but right, right. like you have to build on top of it. Why do you think Dave Ramsey, NerdWallet, Credit Karma, LendingTree, there isn't a, a sort of a winner there um, and, and sort of that brand hasn't emerged uh, in the same way it has uh, or it used to be for travel, for products. Uh, it exists for the Amazon, as you mentioned. Uh, so I think- uh, You have a hypothesis? A few thoughts, right? Like Amazon, for example, like Mahip was talking about, I was working with Mahip when we were trying to build CS uh, Marketplace. It's the same supplier from China. If their margins say on Sears could be 10%, on Amazon, it could be 5%, but it's the exact same damn product, right? So economies of scale work really well. Uh, in lending, it's very, very different or the financial marketplace, right? Uh, maybe not everyone, like I was saying, is even eligible for that product. Uh, your underwriting models uh, are like, as you as a platform don't govern it. Right. I mean, if you have larger con collection of lenders, then you can widen the effective one. Uh, and it's also product based, uh, which is like credit cards, for example, probably would be the widest selection. Like anyone can apply for it. Uh, you, whether you get it or not, would be uh, a different story. And everyone is having every platform has a different niche uh, right. that right. they're going after. Uh, I think eventually it would be either the offering becomes a commodity that you don't like, you could be a small bank, uh, a community bank, and all of your marketplace is empowered through APIs. So right. then you don't have to go to Google or the other side would be everyone goes to one or two top sites uh, to discover uh, things. Yeah, if you're looking for like, the magic bullet, how do we make that one happen? If we had it, we would have done it. <laughs> right, right. Great question. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks, Sushil. And Sushil, thanks for the insights. I mean, this is uh, this level of discussion you typically wouldn't get without, uh, you know, the quality of uh, speakers that we bring in. So thank you so much for that. I have another pointed question. Uh, this comes from Lionel uh, Guarneros. Uh, Lenel, sorry if I murdered your name. Uh, he is joining us from Mexico, uh, from Mexico, and he works for uh, a financial services marketplace there called Tu Decide, uh, which means you decide. And his question is, embedded finance will have some impact in financial services. Uh, do you think it could be a game changer for profiling better opportunities for credit? So, I don't not sure if I understood the full question. I think embedded finance definitely will have a big impact. And that's what I think the previous point I was making. Assuming, say, if there is a central API that you just ping, here's the user, basic PII, and you can get all the offers from the full spectrum, from your insurance offering, uh, auto insurance, home insurance, every financial services that you can consume. If that becomes a commodity, and say if there's a single player that enables it and the cost is very low, then I mean, why portals, right? Like even players like at and could start doing it. Like you could just get an alert, here are the things that you're approved for uh, and you can uh, transact on it. Uh, in these cases, it's very, very uh, difficult to understand when the user is in the market for a new product. I think eventually the gap or the spread that we see between say insurance offering, that will start keep shrinking. Uh, for the same user profile, the spread that we currently have, I mean, on mortgage, it's already started shrinking, right? You're talking about a few thousand dollars uh, switching from uh, like one lender to the other lender. So it will force margins to shrink. Uh, the second part of the question, I'm not sure like where you say leading to, but yes, would would the back end or like finance through a single API with that change the game? It will. Okay. And uh, I have to take a minute of time out here. 
to facilitate shout outs uh, we will keep going till 5:30 pm pacific time which is still another 11 minutes from now uh, but thank you sushil this was very insightful thank you so much for the uh, you know the engaging q and a folks uh, you know uh, you made this forum better uh, i wanted to facilitate shout outs in case somebody has any shout outs from any of the attendees uh you know feel free to uh you know uh, you know shout away it's your floor and uh, before we do that i would encourage everyone to fill the survey uh, that you would get following this talk uh, those surveys uh, allow us to make these talks better they tell us in the true spirit of uh, product management we are able to measure how uh, how did you like this talk whether it provided you information that you actually cared for so please please do fill out the survey this is for folks who are attending live for folks who watch this video later uh, we are grateful for your uh, inputs on those surveys and now uh, shout outs and then we could allow for another few minutes of uh, q and in case anyone has any shout outs and so shil i know you did uh, let me uh, reiterate that uh, that Uh, you know you are looking uh, you're hiring uh, ads uh, lending free uh, you know along the along the spectrum so folks who who are attending who are uh, looking for opportunities i mean you know feel free to connect with sushil yeah and we have roles that we are looking from product analyst to even like uh, vp slash head of our consumer vertical and any other questions folks any other questions that sushil could help answer for you or uh, any general shout outs going once going twice thank you so much folks it's a wrap uh, thank you so much for attending sushil thank you again the talk was very insightful and uh, ris uh, back to you Absolutely, so Shil, that was fantastic, and thank you for working through the the technical difficulties. It was such a great presentation, really wonderful. Thank you for everybody for joining us this evening. Uh, so you know, we do put the video up online uh, with a nice little highlights, and I'll include any of those uh, shout outs and uh, hiring moments that we mentioned earlier. So feel free to check out the blog in the coming week on products that count dot com. And um, one more plug for the product awards next week. It's going to be a really fantastic event and some really great tools to get to know um, at the event. So, um, hope to see you next month. Um, who do we have coming, Mahib? Uh, we have Beth Laganza. Uh, we are uh, setting up an interactive session with her. Uh, it's about uh, the three-legged stool, stool of products and how you keep it in balance. So you know, watch out for the announcement, and uh, you know, we'll definitely invite you for the talk. Awesome, that's great, Mahib. Thank you for sharing that. And uh, just so you know, all of our chapter events are open to anybody. So feel free to check out the events on the website. You can join any of the chapter ones. Um, and with that, uh, we'll wrap it up. Thanks again, Sushil.